exactly how we would shut down at the end of the night, secure the room, or will we have to move everything somewhere? No, so what you could do on this unit, again, if you implement that uh, election code yes. option, so what you would do, <laughs> what you would do is in this mode, you could actually open, uh, you could open this up and hit close polls, but don't close the poll, just hit admin, and it allows you a soft shutdown. Okay. So you can just shut down the unit at that point, and then you just boot it back up in the morning, and it starts right up. Does it print any reports when it boots back up in the morning? It prints just an I opened again. Okay. But you can always go in here and print reports whenever you want. Okay. So that could be a process that you put in place. Okay. With the um, express vote. Um, prints a count each morning. Yeah, it prints a count each morning. Okay. And then with the express vote, again, you can just power it down. Um, and then in, a, in another firmware version of a 2.0 version, you can actually have a lock button. So you can put a lock password on it. And just so you know, you'll be getting the two over. This is just one over version. Same okay. thing, but there's just some internal. Okay. But or, or like I said, just power it off. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, since it's a battle marker only, not no tab, you just power it off and then uh, turn it back on in the morning. And yeah, we can do that. We can demonstrate shut that off and shut that off here if you want. Just so you can see. Yeah, I was more things. concerned about the DS200 and whether or not we would have to go through the poll, close all the polls, get the ballots out, things okay. like that. Okay. Most people do is just they note the public counter. You know, if it's 400 on Monday when you close, and then obviously when you boot up Tuesday morning, the ballot status the counting prints, and then we want to see 400 on that tape, right? So your paperwork can correlate that on a daily basis. And the public count as well on screen will okay. match that. So yeah, so to Shane Teal's point, you know, the House Bill 41, which has just passed. Um, how we read it, and I think I hope you're in the same boat, is now, where now we have in-person absentee, where now they're coming in, voting the ballot, and they're inserting it into an envelope, and, uh, and uh, we uh, end up running that ballot through the 850, okay, within 19 days, guys, uh, I think you can start scanning. So we have that kind of 11 days of early voting, right? Did we start 30 days out? Out? Oh, it's about 20. Okay, so there's kind of that weird eight, nine day window of where they have to, you know, the metal put it in there. So with House Bill 41 is now where they can go ahead, vote early, now they can go ahead and tabulate that, or no, nope, I'm sorry, scan that ballot. All right? We're not tabulating anything. This is just scanning that ballot. Nothing's really tabulated on 200 until we get closed poll. Okay? So they would just be scanned. Uh, so I think that's a really nice lift for you guys because I know you guys go through a ton of you know envelopes and all the processes you guys have to go through uh, in in-person absentee um, with that. So I think House Bill 41 is going to be a really nice lift for well all the counties, but you guys being a mega county, I think hopefully helps you guys out even more than a lot of smaller ones. So other questions, John. Greg, I don't have to do this before. Um, the express vote has a feature called Express Pass. I know it's not certified for use in Ohio yet, I believe, but is there any plan to try to have that certified? You know, um, Sean, we can bring it back in. We have showed it to him. And what Sean's talking to is, you're talking about the phone, right? Yeah. On your phone? Okay, so theory, um, a voter could request, or they could go online, they go to your website, request, and it could be, you could, say send them an email saying this is your password there's a lot of different ways you can do it but they can in theory get their ballot on their phone and they can mark it on their phone so on election day per se they could come in or even an in-person absentee um, if we have the express vote with the barcode scanner they could go ahead insert that blank card and it would read a qr code from their ballot and it would basically be, and it would go take them right to the review page and say, this is how you marked your ballot. They still have the ability to go back and uh, change anything, but that's what Sean's talking to. We have shown it to the state. They got a little weary of it, to be honest with you. They got a little, um, you know, uh, not sure. We're not at that point yet, Sean. I'm not saying, I don't think we don't, we could still go down that path, but. Uh, when did you show it to the state? I'm sorry? When, when did you show it to the state? That's been probably a couple of years ago. So might be a little more, but Joe wants to say something that works right. Yeah, it's, um, 
you know, it's not unlike the, the airport process, really. Um, you know, it's just a, a way of viewing your sample ballot before election day, and basically, um, you can do that today, right? You can go online, view the PDFs of the ballot. You could print it out from home. You could circle your choices so you know who you want to vote for. It's a very similar process on the phone. You, you can't cast it from your phone, and it's a not electronic voting. You, you obviously, much like the airport, you still have to check in at a poll site. They still have to determine that you are a registered voter in that precinct. And they still have to issue you the paper card. You need all of those elements to take place before you can use that on the phone feature. So it's secure, but I, I think Stretch is right that, you know, um, most states are just a little wary still. They're like, oh, you know, that seems like a good idea, but we're not sure. So um, that functionality is there, and it can be added to your voting model at any time. If the state were to say, you know what, it's okay. So you don't have to spend extra to do that. You know, if you've got the barcode built into the, the reader, you can do that at any time. And I think one other thing on that, you know, I, I think a lot of the uh, fearfulness going that direction was potentially vote lying, right? You say, hey, show me how you mark that ballot. But remember, all it's doing is taking the review. It doesn't lock in you to those choices, but it's just going to bring up those choices initially saying, here's, the, here's how you voted. Do you want to make any changes? They could go back and say, yeah, I want to go back, you know, change this, because it's not marking that card until they go ahead and hit print card. Okay, so uh, even though they could in theory go show that, hey, I see Henry, yeah, see I voted for you on, you know, on my phone, but in reality, I got to here, I wouldn't change and deselected it. So, sorry, so, but, uh, okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, when you walked around and showed the uh, tape with the uh, numbers, the closing numbers, mm -hmm. the uh, written, uh, Font size? No, the written name. Um, oh, okay. The right yep. in candidate. Is there a way when they're using the express me instead of seeing the scribbling for a keyboard to come up and they can key in that name so it's absolutely positive that it's so and so versus the squiggle line? Yeah, actually, on that tape, what do we do with that tape? Uh, uh, that is how that works. Yeah, that is. I hand that tape out, or is it right here? I think the images that they show were the ones that people had written on their actual paper ballot. Yeah. The express vote does, oh, like, there the it screen is. does come up on the express vote. It's not a pop-out keyboard, it's just an on-screen keyboard. Okay. Is that what you're talking about? Right. right. Yes. Okay, so that is from a paper ballot. See that right in right there? That is from express vote card. Okay. Where they Great. typed it in. Okay. Yes. Thank you. You bet. Other questions? Yes, Tony. The jump, and I don't know, I can't remember if it was Judd or you, a little bit about the um, ballot stock printer that would uh, work with 10X's poll book to print the precinct on there. So that's a ESNS printer? That is an ESNS printer. That yes. That connects to something. Yes, I'm going to let Judd speak to that. We actually have a, that over here. We can show what it looks like, Tony. I think it's a. Sorry, don't get too close to the speaker. <laughs> I was supposed to give that warning earlier, I forgot. And is that, is, you know why he's getting that out? Yeah. Is that a Schedule A or B item? That's a Table B item. Table B item. Yeah, oh, sorry. Uh, Judge grabbing it, so you can kind of see. Um, it's a really nice little printer, though. Um, basically, it's a peripheral, and it's uh, you'll see it's, it's uh, never really jammed, so card goes in. Uh, this is a thermal printer as well. This can hook up to your bull book or it can hook up to, uh, if you do uh, in-office voting via your voter registration system, obviously this can hook up to a laptop, a PC as well. And you can um, do this in the background using your voter registration system as well. So um, this is another option in person as well. Is it hardwired or Bluetooth? Hardwired. Hardwired. Okay. So basically, card would just get fed in. It would grab it, pull it in by about an inch and a half, lay down the barcode, and spit it back out. Nice thing. Very small. You know, there's had great luck with this printer. No real issues. Doesn't jam. Uh, does a really nice job of just laying down the barcode.
barcode that represents that voter's ballot style. Yeah, and what's nice about this again, uh, you don't have to worry about toner, ink, consumables, it's thermal. And just so you incorporate what 10X is right now? Yeah, so 10X has completed their uh, development on this. They have a, uh, it's a Bluetooth device that acts like a print hub, basically. And the iPad sends a command to that, that device and then prints to the uh, Express Bill printer. Okay. Other questions? Yes, sir. Um, see, you have a photo rips of dollars. Is it going to jam or is it going to come back out? Or? Um, depending on how bad the rip is, I mean, it, um, you know, just depends, but um, I don't know what would be a good way to do it. That sounds nice, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. Spits it back out. And it says ballot too short, please remove ballot. Okay? So depending, because obviously, as you guys all know, you know, it's looking for these timing tracks around to detect what uh, ballot salad is, what precinct it belongs in, all that. So if we can't determine that, it's just going to spit it back out. So if it does jam, obviously, um, you know, you guys are used to clearing jams on the 200. Hopefully, this is going to jam 